So folks, I have a gourmet treat for you today, an absolutely delicious one, because it is Michael Cohen revealing, unlike never before, critical secrets and insights and observation from his testimony at the grand jury looking into Trump and the hush money, you know, Alvin Bragg's grand jury and all of that stuff that he has never, ever said before. And while he's not saying literally everything yet, he is being much more open than he was a few days ago. And I'm bringing you, I think for the first time, some critical insight as well, guys, as his observation on two critical developments that are related to him, but are bigger in many ways as well. So first, he comments on the other day's big news, which is that Stormy Daniels had a meeting with the DA and it was a big deal. If I can come at it this way, um, do you believe you were the last witness they heard from? You know, I don't know the answer. Again, I'm not involved in the inner discussions regarding the completion of this case or the length of time it will take before which Alvin Bragg's office makes its ultimate determination. But I would suspect that I am certainly close to the end of the testimony that is necessary. Did the questioning seem informed by previous appearances from uh, Hope Hicks or Kellyanne Conway in terms you know, of what... again, N Nicole, you're the greatest. <laughs> Love coming on the show, and I plan on coming uh, on the show very, very soon. I really don't want to get into any of the sum and substance of what we discussed and how they based their questions or predicated their questions upon. It would just be unfair to do. Let me ask you if you share Andrew Weissman's legal analysis then that start the, the reemergence of Stormy Daniels today as someone that the DA's office talked to today, I think, and is willing to come in and talk again, um, if that signals that an indictment is inevitable. Do you share Andrew Weissman's assessment? Well, I think many people made that assessment and many people made the assessment prior to the reemergence of Stormy, um, that it was happening anyway. So there's a lot of opinions that are out there. Um, if, in fact, that Stormy is someone that they are going to look at uh, as a substantial witness for this case, I am certain that she will do a fantastic job. She's <laughs> very quick on her feet. And again, the most important thing that needs to be remembered here is that the truth is what will prevail. Not facts, not fiction, not, not fiction, but merely the facts. And the facts do not benefit the former president. So, of course, like on the one hand, you might say, okay, well, obviously the case surrounds her to some degree, obviously, because it deals with payments to her. But, you know, it's not necessarily the case that she would play a big role because if she was just getting money from somebody and then, you know, she doesn't really know and she's just, you know, told this is money for payment or whatever, like it might not be a big deal. But Stormy Daniels is very bright. She's very sharp and she's very eager to see justice here. And what's noted there is that her coming in at this juncture, sort of like Michael Cohen last week, is yet another one of those ironclad signals, those 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 pieces of evidence that you're going to get an indictment and it's going to be very soon that you don't haul in at the very end, your Cohen's and your Daniels. If you're not confident, if you were unconfident about the case, you likely bring in the big people first, because if it falls falls apart with them, then you're just done. But if you're bringing them in at the end for these sorts of things, it means you're pretty damn sure this is going to work and you're just figuring out the details. Not so much the if you're going to charge, but how you're going to do it, how you're going to argue, what specific charges you're going to make. That's the kind of thing. But it gets even better because we get a bit of Cohen reacting to Trump's lawyer meltdown. I did see Ari Melber's handling of Joe Tacopina. And to be honest, I was embarrassed for him. I was actually embarrassed for our profession. He looked completely unhinged. There's something definitely wrong there. But the worst thing is he's following in Rudy Kaludi's steps. When you go out and you make yourself the center of attention, at least know the 
facts. It's one thing when you're talking to some of these other stations where facts don't matter. It's merely playing to a party of one. You're not playing to a party of one when you're sitting across the desk from Ari Melber. And he wasn't going to just accept whatever answer that Joe Tacopina decided to put out there. He was going to challenge him. And sadly, right, it's not the first time George Stephanopoulos did the exact same thing and schooled him. He's- so I showed you that last night. Uh, you've seen it from every other progressive channel. Everyone covered it because it's hilarious and it's big news. But like three times yesterday, but specifically one time, Trump's lawyer had an utter meltdown and, and, and indeed invaded the personal space of a national news anchor on MSNBC, Ari Melber, trying to steal his paper away from him because it had proof of Trump's lies on it. Right. And it had proof that the lawyer either was lying himself or to be charitable, doesn't know what the hell he's talking about and got caught in 4K in front of millions all over the world watching him crumble because his client is terrible. And man, it's tough being a lawyer, I bet. I'm not a lawyer. I wouldn't know, but I'm guessing it's tough, but it's especially tough when you have to lie for your client or your client doesn't tell you when they're lying to you. But there's this critical moment, guys. A critical moment where he reveals something and other experts caught on to it. Cohen, there was a massive crowd, uh, like a giant press conference uh, when Cohen came out of the grand jury today. And he revealed something big. See if you catch it. Then we're going to bring the analyst in. But I want to see if you guys catch it. What we know with a certainty is that the federal prosecutors working for Donald Trump in 2018 said in writing publicly, Donald Trump directed... The word is directed. Federal prosecutors working for Trump directed Michael Cohn to make hush money payments, and then they were falsely booked on the company records. That is the federal prosecutors. So we stay with the truth. Michael Cohn took responsibility, and now it's in the hands of justice and equal justice under the law. Any comments about when you're you know that calling, calling, calling your client a liar? We're, we're not going to Larry, go any Stormy. further than what I just said or what Michael just said. Larry, but did you get Daniels questions from the grand jury? I spoke to prosecutors today. What do you make of that? We do not know that, and we're not going to make anything her of attorney, it. Her attorney says that they spoke to prosecutors. She was forthcoming, as Michael said he has been, and they were impressed with the prosecutors, as Michael has said as well. So we don't know anything about that, and we uh, have nothing to say about it if we did. Michael, will you testify at trial if called? If called, absolutely. As I said, I, I've i made it, um, it's a commitment to the district attorney that I would continue to provide any information uh, and any cooperation that they, that they need. Mr. Cole. Trump's attorneys say that the DA has backed himself into a corner. What do you make of that? So um, I, I know Mr. Trump's attorney, and I've seen his uh, television performances, and he's a, a very effective attorney. But what he doesn't have are facts. We know what the facts are. His client doesn't tell him the facts. He's famous for doing the opposite. So he has my sympathy representing a client who is known not to know what the truth is. Lenny, what's what you your mean? sense whether the district attorney ultimately decides to move forward with an indictment? How certain are you? I'm not certain at all. I do. Uh, I am certain that they've been very thorough and factual and fact by fact and carefully with Michael asked him to tell them the truth and the facts. And we don't have any um, prediction on what they're going to do, but we're pretty confident that Michael has done a good job in telling them the truth. Michael, Michael, Michael your impression of the grand jury? I'm sorry. Do you feel vindicated? This isn't a question of vindication. It's not a question, as I stated before, about revenge. This is a, my position is that at the end of the day, Donald Trump needs to be held accountable for his dirty deeds if, in fact, that's the way that the facts play out. Plain and simple. This is not about him. This is about holding accountability, truth to power, and everything else in between. Michael, Michael, Michael. What do you make of Trump calling himself an extortion victim? I, again, I won't comment on what he wants to call himself. Many of us call him many different things. Michael, if you go to the Guardian, Michael, how um, do you think you provided the most complete account of the episode to the district attorney and the grand jury? Oh, I'm certain of that. And do you think it's damning for Mr. Trump? 
We're you not going to. Yeah, I don't want to comment, <laughs> but rest assured, we all know the facts, and the facts do not support um, Mr. Trump's statements. Well, and finally, well, is Donald Trump, Trump a threat to democracy in your opinion? Yeah, I don't want to comment on, on Donald is, is at he this fit point. To run again? Yeah, I, I, my hope is that the American people see fit. To call him out for the things that he's doing, the things that he says, I would prefer somebody else over Donald Trump, yes. And what is your message to the Republican Party? Think twice. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you. About how long did the testimony last today? Uh, about a couple of hours. Were there personal questions from the jurors themselves? Yes. Yeah. How many? Um, each and every one, uh, yeah. basically okay. asked a question. Make a line Excuse me. So... He said a bunch of stuff there, and he's trying to be careful. But one thing he noted was the eagerness of the grand jury. That they were eager, that they were asking lots of questions. He said basically all of them asked questions. That's rare, apparently. And he said they were mesmerized by the prosecutor, right? Which means that they were, they were into his arguments, right? At the grand jury, there's no defense, right? So there's no Trump lawyer in the defense, but if they're not into the, 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 the prosecutor, if they're not listening, if they look tired, if they look bored, if they look unconvinced, uh, if you can't win over a room without, you know, the other side there, then how are you going to win an actual trial? And the fact that they looked into it and eager and, and willing to believe and have these discussions is a very good sign going forward. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. One second, please. Thank you all. Sorry for the cold. Thank you, and Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank all the time. Some astute reporter getting in um, some important details right there at the end. The testimony lasted, um, I think, over a couple of hours. And that the, I think what he said there was that each and every one of the grand jurors asked him a question. Harry Lippman, what would the significance be if we have that correctly, if we heard that correctly? That is an extremely active grand jury. I've been in grand juries that maybe two, three, four people ask questions. If literally everyone did, and you that's up to 23, and they're probably all there, that is a very, very focused and cohesive, because they're all sharing in the questioning grand jury, special grand jury, actually, is, uh, as I understand it. So all in all, guys, this was a, this was a big moment. This was very big. All of this shows and it, with giving critical secret insight, because without Cohen saying that, we would never know. We don't we're not privy to the uh, the, 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 the 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 grand jury stuff, at least not now. Maybe like in, when the case is done, we get this info. I don't even know. But we're not privy to it. We're certainly not privy to like these details about the body language and things like that. Cohen just tore off the mask of the grand jury in a responsible way, but in a revealing way that demonstrates that Trump's in even bigger trouble than we thought.